Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am Caroline Chang, your host. The mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the universal truth of oneness. Science is now teaching us that all life is interconnected, and spirituality and ancient wisdom has been teaching us this truth for eons, that we're all one. So what you do to another person, you're literally doing to another aspect of yourself. And when mankind awakens to the universal truth of oneness, there will be peace on earth. Today's show topic is monument, monument, mastery. I am sorry, I messed that word up. Momentum. Momentum. You know what? You're right. And I knew that. (laughs) Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Is Momentum Mastery with Thomas Young. Um, We like to uh, welcome Thomas to Awake to Oneness Radio. I discovered Thomas and your work uh, through a film, uh, Awake in the Dream. And when I saw that film, I just loved um, your interview. And I invited you to be my guest, and you graciously accepted. Thank you again. I hope I, with words sometimes, I knew it was momentum. <laughs> and I said the wrong word. But thank you, Thomas. Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. Please share with our listeners your journey. Well, First of all, very much appreciated that invitation. Aloha to everybody. I'm Thomas Young. I'm a German-born heart teacher, wisdom teacher, um, residing part-time in Hawaii, which is sort of the home of my heart or home of my soul. I very much love that. And I've been offering heart-centered work since 17 years, almost two decades now. And this work is has been in the first years a lot about creating temple atmospheres where people can have breakthroughs into the very depths of their souls that may that may sound very simple but actually having an in-depth soul experience is much more than reading about the soul or having an understanding about it it's it's a first heart experience and you're shaken to the core if you have it or showered with bliss, hard to find the right work if you inwardly connect to your own divine resources or heritage. So I've been doing a lot of these things, um, heart initiations, 10 days, weekends, and then this teaching has been diversified into a lot of arenas. It's based on the ancient mystery school teachings, and we do four sacred arts. We do healing, so that I work, uh, dream work, mm-hmm. I love dream work, uh, because uh, we are guided by dreams as well, or healed, or being directed, and storytelling. Mm-hmm. And um, now, since two, three years, I wonder whether the work is all about getting a spiritual high or peak experience, because I see a lot of people after that, two weeks later, one month later, gliding back into their usual everyday pattern, so to speak. And um, I'm very fascinated by how we manifest, Mm -hmm. um, how we bring our heart into our everyday world, into our relationships, our jobs, because I think that this uh, tension between the opposite or the, the, the polar sides of reality has to be embraced. There isn't the mystic on the mountain and the merchant on the marketplace it has to come together and also inwardly has mm-hmm. to come together and therefore we need a center which is the heart and since two three years um i developed a process called momentum mastery <laughs> <laughs> yes i hear a lot of people all over the world just, just mixing it up <laughs> But I love it. I love it. Now, before (laughs) before we get into that, can you please share a little bit of your backstory, how this all came to be for you? Well, I grew up in Germany and um, studied there, very creative life, so to speak. 
And I ran into two teachers, one um, a very wise lady uh, coming from the heart, doing uh, work as a trans, deep trance medium. Mm -hmm. uh, so she accompanied me for six years, and then I was doing a lot of work with an American mystic, Bro Joy, uh, the next six years. So I have a sort of a very balanced, um, feminine, masculine, female, male mm -hmm. teaching um, experience, and especially um, the later time was Brew, who became a mentor and friend of my soul, um, influenced me very much. I, I experienced heart initiations myself, and it was as if I could, uh, I was mm, gifted with a, a, a glance beyond the veils of my own life. Mm -hmm. I could sort of see what was leading me into that moment or situation which decisions um, and at my life's crossing, so to speak. And I could also see the future in becoming. I, I, I could see it like if I do this decision, it would lead me to that crossing. And then two ways to go. And again and again, mm -hmm. I, I could see a lot of ways which were possible to walk from there. But it was as if one way had the greatest light or the greatest love or was in, in deepest alignment with my soul. And so I did my very best to choose that path. Right. Maybe sometimes I'm off and I cost correct. It does, it's not about perfection, but it's like if you walk the part of your soul, the path of your soul, of your heart, you walk happy. You walk in alignment. So you walk true. in self. And, um, doesn't mean there's no pain. Yes, there are ups and downs and this and that, but it's, it's your very unique path. Yes. And I believe that everybody has that sacred dream and the momentum mastery is a process to manifest the sacred dream of your soul. It's not so much about becoming the richest, most famous, da 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 da, -da. It's about manifesting the uniqueness which you are, the dream of your soul, into 3D reality and i believe that there is uh it's possible in a much deeper way than we have been uh, introduced to it through uh things like the secret mm -hmm. it's a lot about the mental focus but i believe we have to touch into deeper uh realms of consciousness where we think those thoughts which are not supposed to change our reality and then the success to, the, to that realms or those realms. This is what I teach in my courses and I, I don't have clients or something. I, I have fellow adventurers, cost, consciousness pioneers. Right. Um, so you don't have to have a problem to come to my course. <laughs> it's, you're, ha you're happily invited to right. walk with me towards the edge of consciousness and beyond. And, and that is what I do all over the place. And it's for me, it's a privilege and, and uh, a joy to do it. Yes. And I, um, I, I love doing this momentum process, process right now in two weeks. The book is coming out, Living Your Momentum or Live Your Momentum oh, in Germany. Okay. I'm reading it right now into English. See, Great. it's coming out in the States and then. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I, 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 I hear what you're saying and I resonate mm -hmm. com so completely because I, I, did, I was excited when I heard about The Secret coming out and I rushed to, to get it yes. and I, I put it in and I, 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 I was disappointed. I was disappointed because I felt like, okay, I, I heard all this before. It's no secret. The, the first, my first <laughs> My first thought, the secret is not a secret. Yeah, right. But there was no new information in there for me. And I think that was in 2007, or uh, maybe before, so, uh, somewhere around there. And there was no new information for me. The new information for me came when I watched a few months later the film What the Bleep. Have you ever yeah. heard of What the Bleep? Oh, of course. It yes. was quantum physics, and that was the film that I had, what, what, like you said, from the heart, 
-hmm. I had my heart awakening to the truth of oneness from what the belief. It was yeah. one, one sentence that Lynn McTaggart said was, the biggest problem in the world today is the illusion of mm -hmm. separateness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, something woke up inside of me. My soul like said, yeah, this is true. If we truly, and it's very, for me, I keep it very simple. It's all, we're all one. It's all connected. It's, there's no separation. That's just an illusion in the dream, like waking up in the dream. I believe once you wake up in this dream, what you want to do is share that awakening. Um, and like you said, it has to come from the heart, has to mm -hmm. come from within each person uniquely. They to, to discover their unique path, their mm -hmm. unique journey. And so that's why we came here to do that. We came to be a unique aspect of the divine and to shine our light and by following our heart and by following our soul guidance and like you said we sometimes we we're not always on that path you know our soul is but our soul is always nudging us you know yeah. if, we, we, if we make a misstep our soul you know it right away because your soul like nah this way i want you to go this way so it's so great so please share more about um the the workshops that you do? Well, first of all, I would agree to what you say and add that if we want to break through the veil of illusion, uh, it's not a mental thing because our mind is so used to operate on separateness, so to speak, yes. it's analyzing, it's criticizing, it's, it's scrutinizing, so it always puts reality into this is and that's into A and B's and polarities actually. Right. So we, we need a sort of change of focus in ourselves to another realm of consciousness, which I call the heart. And um, for me, that is a, how do you say, a fountain of strengths. It's, it's not a soft heart. It's not the, the, this esoteric, pinkish, uh, fluffy heart. Right. It's a very powerful thing to be experienced, and then that uh, directly connects you because the, the virtues or values or qualities of the heart center, like compassion, uh, innate harmony, the healing presence, unconditional love, they will hold you into that connection yes. on a daily basis True. because you can sort of fall, fall out or. Right. Get out of very fast. Right. Yes. <laughs> I agree with you so much. And like you said, like people will come to your workshops and they'll have a, like the high and then a few weeks later, they're back to their old routine. So I understand what you're saying. It's living that truth that you yeah. tap, once you tap into it, living it moment. I don't even say day to day. I say living it moment to moment. It's a mm -hmm. moment to moment I remind myself every moment of every day the truth of reality, you know, that this is a dream of my own creation and that the highest vibrations are love and thankfulness. And in every moment, there's something to be thankful for. And, that, and we can focus on the things we're thankful for in, in, in the moment, or we can focus on something we think we need, but we have everything we need. So the, the truth. And it's just being in the now and remembering the truth that it's a beautiful, you know, there's a blessing in every now moment. And that's the thing you have to do on a moment to moment basis, I think, you know, so I, I love, and have you ever heard of heart math? Of course. I okay. love being, you know, their teachings. Um, yes. I know them in and out. Yes. I had I, Howard Martin on uh, maybe a year ago, but from HeartMath, yes. But go ahead. Yeah, they, they have a very scientific approach, which um, I think it's, it's fabulous um, in order to uh, do all these experiments on, on heart coherence and heart mm -hmm. meditation, how they influence the body, uh, how they prevent uh, diseases to even e exist, and so on and so forth. So I'm very aware of those teachings or those, those experiments. However, um, what I'm doing is 
I'm sort of holding a golden thread coming out of the mystery school traditions, mm -hmm. very ancient heart-centered teachings on the one hand, and then I open up myself for medicine coming from the future, uh, for inspirations which are not even there, right. and then combine that and create new things out of it. Um, I, you were asking about the workshops. Right. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, for instance, I have one workshop, uh, which is called, called Seven Hearts. And um, it's about six unique ways, six hearts, mm -hmm. uh, like a six star, if you want, six different angles to lighten up the sevens, the whole star. And um, so people are exploring how... Uh, what is my unique key in this phase of my life? And that's, this might be different for a young mother with four screaming kids yeah. to an old lady who's about to pass over to her Sky family. Right. So it's like um, you may need very different keys for different phases in your life. Um, and in a lot of spiritual passes, we do not have... Um, this uh, I, which also takes the individual approach mm -hmm. into account. We have a whole lot of traditions coming from India and the Far East and also Christianic traditions, which are very um, principled, and you have to fit in the principle. And um, the uniqueness or the, the, individual, the individual approach for you being a sacred divine soul and a body uh, who's um, looking for a unique expression and maybe also for a unique key. Yes. It's not to be taken into account a lot, so I have workshops for that. Mm. Um, Very good. I love that. <laughs> so it's your your approach, um, it, it, it centers on the individual, their uniqueness. And because like you say, you can't fit everybody in the same no, you oh. can't super, superimpose. I think yes. that's an model. You superimpose something on people and they have to fit in. Of course, there are, in an is, in a, initiatory process, there are steps to be taken and you have to sort of surrender personal will to divine will if you want. Mm -hmm. But um, until you reach there, we are so different. Um, for instance, I have a workshop tonight with 70 to 100 people in Hamburg called Seven Generations, where I clear um, the ancestry, clearing it in the sense that the indigenous people, Christian beliefs are that through seven generations, we store up in our cell, in our body, in our physical memory, mm. everything which happened in a clan. Okay. So, who knows what happens happen in your clan, like maybe for two or three generations, but four, five, six, seven. Okay. Let's say somehow in the, un, in, in the unconscious, but still in the physical system. Mm -hmm. So we, we do not come as a carte blanche. We come as highly defined and highly conditioned okay. individuals mm -hmm. in this world. And I think one part of spiritual work is also to, in the best sense, um, decondition yourself from those informations which are no longer serving uh, the highest well-being of your soul right. or of the, of the whole. And we are like, like transition generations. Mm -hmm. What was true for 2,000 years, it's not true any longer. It doesn't work any longer. Right. Family structures are in different patchwork families, single households. Uh, we have to redefine our whole way of interacting and also approaching spirituality. And, and therefore, uh, if we do that with all this ancient information, which mm -hmm. is not serving us, or the traumas of um, the clan, that is not beneficial. You can be a person who is, uh, let's say, clairvoyant, right. but you can come out of a clan which doesn't know anything about clairvoyancy, and you have all the different voices in your system, which are saying, oh, don't listen to that. Don't mm -hmm. follow your hunches, don't follow your impulses, but you know, <laughs> it's the right. only thing to do. So it's like, um, we have to clear that. And um, part of the work is clearing that stuff out of the way, all the programs which are sort of 
um, hindering right. or blocking you from accessing your deepest, richest success of your soul, right. as well as um, focusing on your very strengths, right. which is most of the work, like like focusing on um, the sacred divine mm-hmm. um, success, which, which everyone has. Yes. And um, strengthen the strengthening that to the max so i would say i offer realms where people can have reverential experiences Mm -hmm. they can for the for the first time they feel what it is to be in the heart they don't talk about it or read it in the biography of a mystic they are their own experiments they feel it and they will feel it and then they they are showered and then they are changed by themselves. Is, it, I'm just this uh, catalyst who's holding the space yes. and, and initiating it. But it's something in yourself. In the ancient mystery school traditions, what you would do is you would lead people to a threshold. Mm-hmm. And if you cross that tr- threshold, and you can only do that by your own will and in your own heart, right. you will enter a transpersonal realm. So... Um, this is what you do. You guide people to the threshold and then they jump or they don't. But if they are open enough, right. um, they will be right. embracing and receiving um, this beneficial energies. Right. So this is like the foundation of my work, okay. getting people into a first heart experience. And then now, what do we do afterwards? How do we speak from the heart? How do we listen with our heart? How do we go into the unconscious and uh, not scared to do it? Right. How do we, do we go up and, and have a look over our soul's path? Right. That's right. Um, part yes. of that work. Well, yes. one, of, one of the things for me that helps to keep me in the truth of oneness and living yes. it daily, daily and is not watching mainstream news. Um, mainstream media I stopped watching news myself I got a, a strong <laughs> message from my heart yeah. and my soul after 9-11 in 2001 it, it said turn off that news and don't ever turn it back on and I didn't know why at that time I wasn't awake to the truth of oneness at that time and um, I didn't know why but I knew it was coming from my heart and I was like okay I turned it off I've never turned it on since. So I think that's one of, for me, keeps me <laughs> grounded because it, it keeps that noise, a distraction of mainstream media out of my, my consciousness. But so. you know who your president is right now. You're aware of that, right? <laughs> I know, and it's okay. You know what? It's <laughs> yes, I do happen to know. I actually, okay. I do, you know what? All the news that I need to hear does come to me, and okay. I have nothing but love for President Donald. I I like to call him the Donald. I have nothing but love for him because I know he's he's not. There's no one excluded from oneness. So, uh, you know, if I didn't have anything but love for him, that I'm not really walking my truth of oneness, you yeah. know? So, and I believe that everything happens for our highest good. I do. So he's in the position that he's in for our highest good. Uh-huh. I believe that. I do. All right. I You're believe in- I, yeah. I believe our soul knows what's going on. Because even when, when I found out, because I didn't find out right away. I did vote. I wrote, I, I wrote in Bernie. <laughs> okay? yeah. I love Bernie. So I, I did vote. And I, did, I don't have news. So that whole next day, I didn't know what happened. Um, I teach piano lessons. And my seven-year-old piano student came in all sad. And I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, I'm upset because Donald won. I was like, you know what? You're the first person to tell me this. And I said, <laughs> I said please don't be up. I gave him a big hug. I said, don't be upset. It's all good. Because when I sensed earlier in that day that Donald had won, my soul was overjoyed. I go by my soul and it was overjoyed for some reason. I'm like, I don't know why, but it's overjoyed for some reason. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go with it. It's he is, he's there for our highest good. So yeah. it's, it's all good. It's all yeah. good. Yeah, in, <laughs> Europe, in Europe, they look at this with slightly different eyes. Okay. But 
what you say it, it, <laughs> it, reminds, it reminds me of um of ramdas okay um, the spiritual teacher who's now living on maui i think he's still alive yes. in his late 80s yes he once said on a talk um Oh, he has so much love in his heart, and then he has his altar, and then there's Jesus, and Mother Mary, and Mary Magdalene, and Mother Teresa, and then there is Kaspar Weinberger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, he, ah. and it was so difficult for him to laugh Kaspar. Okay. Because Kaspar would resemble everything he doesn't like. Okay. So hard. It was so hard for him to practice love for Casper. Okay. So you're reminding me um, of well, that. Well, and in, are you familiar with Conversations with God? Of course. The, okay. In the, in the book one, very early, like on the second or third page, it says, Hitler went to heaven. And if when you understand this, you will understand all of this teaching. Mm -hmm. That there is no separation. That's who... If whatever we quote unquote dislike is an aspect of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So all we, we have to, we have to shine love on it, you mm -hmm. know, shine a light of love that will transmute and transform everything. So there is no one from past, present, future that I have nothing but love for. Cause I know that, that there is no separation. They're part, a part of me. So I know Donald Trump is a part of me. So I have nothing but love for him. And mm -hmm. I do believe that him coming into office has stirred things up. And I think things need to be stirred up. And that was kind of, he's the catalyst of yeah. even stirring people's emotions up because those emotions have to come up and rise up and, and transmute for us to make the shift, you know, the consciousness shift to a higher level as a collective. So all of that muck, it has, it's kind of like when you think of, um, you know, a fish tank and, and all of the muck that settles to the bottom, it has to be stirred up. And I think he's the catalyst that is stirring up all that muck. So. That's certainly one way to see it. Mm -hmm. And a very spiritual perspective, social perspectives on it might be different, but let's not give him too much space in this interview. He has yes, some <laughs> I agree. I agree. He, <laughs> he, he has enough space in mainstream yes. media. <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> so please share with us some of uh -huh. your, of your yeah. methods of bringing people to that heart-centered experience. Right. I, I wanted, before I wanted to, to uh, add some thought to one of your thoughts, you said okay. um, that gratitude or thankfulness is a, uh, major spiritual uh, virtue value and I think that's very true um, I find it very intriguing that uh, the happy end and thankfulness are like brothers and sisters they're always going hand in hand yes and if, if um, consciousness as we know is not bound to uh, time it's timeless yes. If you, if you then practice thankfulness and and sort of take the happy end or the what you envision as a happy end, you in a year, or you in five years, or you with your most beloved project or the, your dream manifested, yes, we would call that the happy end. Right. And if you put that into your heart now mm -hmm. and yes. connect connect it with gratitude or thankfulness. You are becoming the happy end right now, even if it's not mirrored in 3D reality now, yes. but it's like you were pregnant with your own happy end. Yes. And it's only a matter of time because the universe is, uh, it, it has been pledged into resonating. It cannot, it, it, it has to resonate. It, it's built up by resonances. So if you broadcast through your most powerful broadcast station, which is not the mind, but the heart, yes. with every heartbeat, that vision and gratitude into the world, it will become step-by-step -step reality. Uh, it will become not only by sitting on the couch and, and doing that, but also by proactively um, going forward and decide. If 
doors are opening, go for it, decide, take, take action. Right. Yes. But always with that happy yes. end in the now, in the heart, and with his sister, gratitude. Yes. So it's like when you were, when you were asking me what methods, it's um, very hard to describe. Of course, you can say I, I do a lot of guided meditations. They are all 14 CDs or whatever. And um, a guided med meditation is a good method. Right. But it's, it's much more what you experience when you are together in a circle. Mm -hmm. and, and you create a circle. First, there are 30, 50 uh, maybe egos. Mm -hmm. And after a while, there are 40, 50 souls shining through. So it's always a, uh, uh, a movement from the egoic parts of yourself, um, personality parts, to the, uh, uh, the greatness of your soul. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that in America, there's this definition, ego means EGO, edging got out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh -huh. that's what we don't want. Right. We don't want. Right, right. <laughs> but stuck in that sort right. of uh, separation, mm -hmm. and with the heart center as our foundation, our alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, in and of yes. itself, we create a heart space. Mm -hmm. and in that heart space, healings happen, reconnections with your spiritual heritage, divine heritage happen. Dreams suddenly come in. Uh, people explore themselves very differently. Mm -hmm. They see themselves differently. And in a way that um, we do not judge each other. No more judgments, right? No more comparisons. And when that happens and people look at each other with the eye of the soul, um, the, the, the stage is there for spirit to enter. Um, it's, it's like you combine uh, an individual call, call to the divine with 40, 50 people. You have a much more powerful call. Okay. That's, how, that's why we come together in groups. Otherwise, we could read books or be on a mountaintop, which we can also do, and which is not a bad thing. Right. But the, the blessing of group work is that this force field, the spiritual force field, that the field, yes. you, you create a field, and the answer is much more powerful in that field. So this is what I uh, love to create. And uh, I think that's, that's basically, it sounds simple, but you, as a teacher, you have to be on the lookout uh, when somebody's coming from the ego or from the soul, and you have to gently or not gently or whatever is it, um, is the best tool in that moment right. to make sure that no ego takes over the circle. Mm -hmm. Also, not the ego of the teacher. Right. So you have to know that in yourself. True. When am I coming from uh, egoic parts or when, I'm, when am I in full contact with my soul? And you have to have a very clear um, knowing or knowledge who you are. Yes. This is key to any teaching. If you, don't, if you do not have that, so true. <laughs> that is so true. There, you, you, you touched about, upon so many things, and I'm making mental notes. Um, <laughs> going back to the now, um, being yeah. thankful in the now, um, one of the key pieces of my awakening was understanding that time is an illusion. That that vision of, the, of like my vision, I have so, my vision, um, um, my son transitioned two and a half years ago, and his name was Kyle. And I started a foundation, the Kyle Foundation, and the vision for the Kyle, and Kyle stands for Keep Your Light Expanding, K-Y-L-E. Um, and my vision is to have a, a oneness center, a oneness community center here in my area. And yeah. that vision um, is here in the now, because there is no time. So if, if you can dream it and imagine it, it exists. because okay. you, it, and, and it exists right here and now. Even though if we can't touch it right here and now, but it still is here and now. And it's up to us to raise our vibration so we are 
touching it. So that was very key to my awakening, knowing that it is here and now. And that what that's how I can be thankful for it here and now, because I know it is here. So, right. Yes. Well, for, especially for, for that thing, which, which is a project of your heart, very much in alignment with your soul. Yes. I created this momentum mastery process. I have like 14 steps. Yes. Which um, strengthen that vision in the now. Oh, cool. Which uh, sort of keep it in your everyday awareness. Yes. It's like like um, you were sorting off, you're sort of building a spiritual vessel for it. Yes. Uh, to take a metaphor. And you're nourishing that vessel daily. Yes. When you connect that vessel with the rest of the universe, then you engage the uh, benevolent forces or the agents of the universe to bless this vessel and and that dream and to interact with it yes. then you would at one point um speak your own dream sacred you you would make it sacred not not the pope not not the shamanic leader not the guru not the teacher you yourself would do a sacred commitment and and um sort of um speak making your dream a sacred dream and and you commit yourself to the heart mm. uh, which is a very powerful thing then if we do that we also have to take into account that whenever we we make a step into a bigger uh, arena or realm of consciousness there's also a force pulling back it's like you um, take a step and then your old self comes in after a while <laughs> so, oh, 15 years, we, my hormones, they, they put out that beautiful emotion of guilt. Let's put it out again. And then <laughs> the system puts out guilt again, but you know there is no guilt at all in this universe. But you right. really have experience. Right. What the heck is my, my physical system doing? So all the right. subconscious programs are starting to kick in, and you have to have, you have to keep it in, uh, in your awareness that that happens and it's like your spirit mm -hmm. has to frustrate your old self or an addiction or a habits yes. you have to frustrate your habits don't let the habit frustrate you exactly mm -hmm. so it's like um you have to be a very keen keep up a very keen spirit and then very aware that this happens right. and then when you're through that you're suddenly entering realms where time is different than collective time. This is what I would call a momentum. So you are not mm. only the dancer, you're also the dance and what dances through you. Yes. The dance of the dance and the being danced, uh, or a painter, or um, an actor, an athlete. Yes. Um, suddenly you're on top of your game and you don't think about it, it just happens. Yes. Yes. And, and, and the thing is, all the people you interview about this moment, they say, time was different. Um, it, it was just so slow. Yes. I had all the time in the world to do this movement, for instance. Yes. I, I had, um, um, two years ago, the first a Momentum Mastery Yearly program with, with, with a group over mm -hmm. five models, whatever, came together. And sometimes there are individuals with very acute consciousness who are dreaming up the whole thing beforehand mm. on the first day or something. Uh, they, they get a dream. And there's a mystic from Bavaria. Yes, they exist, mystics in Bavaria. <laughs> Not only Oktoberfest and Lederhosen, um, so there are mystics. And, and he was in the, in the group and he had a dream mm -hmm. and he was dreaming a soccer game, the, the, the final, like Super Bowl, but right. soccer, American football. The Momentum Mastery fighters were playing the inner inertia devils. And um, the problem was the Momentum Mastery fighters were all very tiny, like, you know, Okay. Five feet, and the others were like six foot four, and um, yes, very uh, built, uh, muscled up guys, right? 
And it was going back and forth, one, one, blah, blah, blah. Suddenly, he was um, the offense in the momentum mastery, um, the striker, the, the goal getter. And he get, gets this thing from the side and goes into the air and sort of shoots it while he's attacked by four guys and boom, like, like a rocket into the corner, bam. Uh, applause, applause. And then he's getting interviewed. How did you do it? And he's answering like all the sports. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes. there was something was the timing. Yes. I had all the time in the world. It was flowing differently. I don't know yes. how. Yes. And I'm, I believe that this is a realm of consciousness, a, a, uh, an arena which you can consciously evoke. Mm -hmm. So you can enter it. Yes. Without being in the stadium, and then that thing has to come from the right, or without having a, a nearby accident or something, right. Right. Mm -hmm. the soul. you can consciously evoke and enter those spaces, and, and that's also what fascinated you so much at the bleep. If you yes. enter the space where reality is not defined yet, but that's very tough to enter. Mm -hmm. It's like if it were easy. Yeah, every disease, gone in a sec. Right. But obviously we need, uh, with our old genetic material, which we are, right. uh, we, we need some time or we need some training to really get deep enough into this three arms of pure consciousness or heart consciousness or down to the bottom of ground of reality or where, where it manifests and where mm -hmm. it yes. then become one thought, right. one focus, one attention, one movement, suddenly the neurochemical portals open up and your um, system goes into self-healing, Yes. which although you wish it so much, although you want it so much, although you pray for it so much, in another realm, the neurochemical portals do not open up for whatever reasons. Right. And this is very interesting. We are now knowing a lot more about the brain. Um, uh, you mentioned Lynn McTaggart, the Institute yes. of Heart Mavs, Bruce Lipton, all the other people. Yes. Uh, Joe Dispenza, Tralala. They, they are all um, doing their research around the brain and, and uh, the reptilian brain, the limbic system, the neocortex. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that if we have that in sort of alignment, we can have the most powerful um, manifestation. Yes. And the limbic yes. system, which is steering the hormones and the emotions, that is a very crucial key. Uh, the Buddhistic uh, practicing, becoming one, becoming centered, one thought, neocortex. But what do you do with the limbic system where our emotions are stored? And there, the heart center teachings come into play because the heart masters the emotional body. It does not suppress it like the mind would do, or the neocortex would also sort of, if it doesn't want to push it to the side. It masters the emotional body, it integrates the emotions, it transforms it. It's like um, it can take fear and it transforms it into a certain form of alertness. It takes. Mm -hmm. uh, aggression and it's sort of transformed into divine passion yes. and and so um, the heart has a master key to the limbic system which we need in order to if we want to go into self-healing right. to open up the neurochemical portals and um, keeps us in connection with the universe, so, so it, it, it sort of prevents us from getting into the illusion of separateness, which we yes. fall into time and again, yes. Yes. very easily. Well, you just hit upon the key, what, you just beautifully said what I was trying to say with the stirring up the emotions, yes. that is what the Donald. No, no, we don't want to talk about him anymore. Okay, we're not going to talk about him. But that is what. But that's what he's. That is. That's what's happening in America, and I think worldwide, but especially in America. 
it's stirring up all those emotions that can't be suppressed. They're, you know, we, we're trained to do that. You know, don't cry, you know, yeah, hold right. it in. You know, we're trained, society tells us to suppress our emotions, yeah. but they need to be stirred up so we can transform them, like you said. So yes, <laughs> yes, so yes, so yeah. It seems like you're perfectly right. You cannot suppress anything. Actually, spiritual work is about um, keeping your heart so wide that you can always say from with the eye of the mystic, and I'm that as well. Right. I have a normal in me. I'm the good, the bad, the ugly. And, and it's all part of me. So this is always the wise sentence, Tatvamazi, I'm also that. Yes. And all of that. Yes, yes, I yes. Find it in myself and connect it to my heart. There's a healing pattern in the world. If I cut it off, um, it becomes unconscious and it becomes charged. It, I mean, isn't it astounding that you have this uh, generation um, the fathers who grew up in the 50s and the 70s, we call it here in Germany, it's called um, the economic wonder. Mm -hmm. They were very fo focused on material things. Yes. Building up society after World War II. Yes. How the heck can they have kids who are tattooed all over the place, um, who have piercings, mm -hmm. who are raving towards the Berlin Wall, in a love parade. Yes. It's like Dionysus has come in. Yes. If Apollo is too, too strict, too ordered, right. too much um, in the mind, Dionysus comes in and wow, here's ecstasy, here's emotions, here's dance. Yes. Uh, so freedom. It's like yes. It's freedom. freedom. Yeah. Yes. Freedom. Yes. So you cannot suppress anything. Yes. Exactly. It will come up. It has and, to. And it will come up with the next generations, and they are so creative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> very true, very true. And I, I truly believe that true freedom comes from expressing from your soul, from your heart, with no fear. Absolutely. Just, yeah, just, no, just bringing what's in uniquely inside of you up and sharing it with the world with absolute no fear. fear. And that's true freedom. Yes. That's yes. true freedom and that's also true spirituality. I would say that mm -hmm. do, if you do not listen to the voice of fear in yourself, or every time you hear it, you are not, you're gently pushing it to the side. Yes, I know you are my fearful voice, but I will not listen to you. I will speak and act from my heart or from, um, from my soul. And this is like... Um, I would say it's not always what people learned in their childhood right. or in their school where they are sort of having to adapt to um, collective processes, to societies. Yes. So they haven't been trained in that. And we have to sort of uh, repractice getting access sometimes to the voice of our heart. Yes. And when we hear it, we have to practice to have the guts and the courage to also speak it. Yes. There are so many. Yes. I once heard Judith Olof, the American clairvoyant psychiatric, give a talk in Hamburg, and um, she was giving a talk in a, a prison for women and asking these women uh, who were there for very different reasons, if before they did commit whatever crime it was, if they had heard that voice inside, which said, don't do that. Right, yeah. And 400 arms are up, they all had heard it. Okay. But they didn't follow. So it's, it's both. It's, it's hearing it and preparing the space to follow, to go through and also to develop a, um, I would say, a higher form of trust in yourself. And that you can only, if you have the experience, yes. of how that is. Therefore, I'm always ending up in referential or reference experiences. Yes. Where you can, um, you always get the signature that compassion is fine. Oh, yes. try. Wonderful, yes, of course. But it really 
incarnating it and nice. acting from it, completely different story. And um, if people have experienced it, they, they just naturally come from that space. If they have only read it, maybe they force themselves into coming from that space, right? But it's not the same. Nice. So we, we have to um, somehow dance an energy dance where we um, get access to that realms, have a first hard experience, and then try to integrate that into our everyday awareness. Um, and it's possible. We can have switches, impulses, reminders. We can have a daily meditation, which sort of centers us. It, heart-centered teaching is a lot of um, having a decent mystery and not an essence mystery. My approach is not to get people out of their body into whatever spaces, but to get heaven on earth. And that means to incorporate your soul <clears throat> to incorporate the divine forces yes. coming yes. an agent for it without religion necessarily. Yeah. Spiritual experience means first, first hand for that you experience religion. Maybe you can, but who knows? Um, so in my courses, there are people from all walks of life, all yes. religions, no religions, shamanic ways, spiritual passes. Everything is welcome because all these ways have a heart chamber yes. in the midst of their teachings, and um, it can be accessed, and you can have your own dialogue with God, if you think he's outside, or with your own divinity, if you think it's inside. However you are framing it, or exactly. um, having a connotation with it, um, I'm fine with everything. Um, and, and then the stage opens up for an individual, a group, a logical active to um, embody their yes. hearts. And uh, this is what we train in this Live Your Momentum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> true. It's so true. It's so true what you're saying. And it, it, it is the, the experience because you, you can, like you said, you can read something in the book, in the book and it can sound really beautiful. But it, you need to experience to really to be able to grasp onto it in that now moment when you when your soul is saying mm, you shouldn't do that then you when you have that heart experience you 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 know from experience i need to listen yeah. to my soul yes so so true so true uh it, it's, it's so beautiful now when are you going to be in the states i know you spend half your time in Hawaii, but oh, yeah. when are you going to be on the East Coast? <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to be doing a workshop in as my name? As, as soon as you invite me and organize it, I will do that. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Well, hey, now, no. you, you just gave me a challenge, and I'm yeah. up to that challenge. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Have, so, you, have you been to the East Coast? Of the United not, States. No, not yet. I do a lot of teachings in the in Europe, all over the place. Right. And um, I got a call myself three years ago that if I would not start to do more workshops in nature, I would lose my own access, my instinct, instinctual mm-hmm. access to the elements and natural forces, and I would get sick. Okay. I could go down the timeline. I could do the could see the disease. So I decided to arrange a lot of workshops. Or retreats in nature. So what I do oh now, yes. is, um, I do in March, um, 12th of March, 10 days in Hawaii, Dreamtime in Paradise, beautiful retreat. There are still some spaces open because okay. people don't want to fly over mm-hmm. due to the one we don't talk about anymore. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, and then... Uh-huh. In, in April, I will do a, ten, uh, a week long in uh, Sedona, Great okay. Mystery. So yes. we will hike the vortexes. Yes. And I will do a Mary Magdalene retreat in South France. On, uh, uh-huh. Mary Magdalene. So a lot of thanks for your listeners to Spontaneous. Yes. yes. 
do and um, if you ca if you organize it I will come we oh, can okay. talk about it and yes uh, well nature I, I live in the mountains um, the Pocono Mountains and mm -hmm. oh there's beautiful nature retreats that we can oh yes yes I'm I'm on it <laughs> <laughs> I am totally on it. Yes, that is definitely. Oh, yeah, you love it. I, I love it here. I know Spirit brought me here 26 years ago, and I am a nature person. I love lakes, and I'm on the water all the time. And so, yeah, I am so excited. So excited. It's so, also, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What I wanted to say is, um, as regards nature, it's one thing to read about it, to read about a vision quest, for instance. And it's a second thing to do it. The, the, the map is not the territory. The map is not the experience. We have to do things. I remember when my, my teacher, this white-haired mystic, stood in front of me in Arizona in mm -hmm. 20 years ago and said, well, now go out and look for a teacher. I stare at him, what, you are my teacher. No, you go out and look for a teacher. I said, you are my teacher. Well, you go out, you let yourself be taught by the stars, by, by the sand, by the plants, by an animal, mm. which speaks to you. When you come and start the communication first, right? so the Western mind looks at, it, at him and says, well, yeah, okay. But the heart is open for the adventure. Yes. Yes, yes. Then it's like, then you are there sitting on that mountain for hours and nothing speaks to you. Nothing. <laughs> You're dehydrated after 10 hours and then you go back to a camp or sleep there and the second day nothing speaks to me as well and the third day nothing speaks to me. There are two eagles in the distance. They don't talk to me. <laughs> and then it's like, um, and I'm about to finish that experiment. Right. But then down... On the bottom of that mountain, I see two squirrels playing with each other. And um, suddenly I'm touched because of the playfulness. Yeah. The speed and, the, and I sit down and I send a thought down there. And yes. the thought is, okay, last try. Squirrel, if you are my teacher, show it to me. Mm. So one squirrel stops, looks up. Mm. I find that nice, but... That is not proof enough for me. It just stops and looks up, right? Okay. So it starts, it leaves its companion and ch -ch 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 -ch, coming closer, 100 meters, 50 meters, mm -hmm. 20 meters, and I'm just not moving at all. One meter sits itself on the stone opposite to me, looks at me, and does this. Okay. <laughs> Now that that to me, yes. and then a second time. <laughs> I, that is amazing. I restless. I, I, I didn't know what to do. That was amazing. And then it's, it just stares in my eye for two minutes, and then it leaves, um, yes. reconnecting its companion. And I think, uh huh. Now squirrel is my teacher. What now? Okay. And, <laughs> and then I didn't go into the next New Age bookstore, squirrel, tick, 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 tick. I just wanted to be in touch with the magic of that moment or stay in touch. But the thing was, after this connection, I was flooded with squirrels. I didn't know that in this retreat center there were squirrels at all. Mm -hmm. I would, 40, 50 squirrels, they were showing me where they were living, they were kissing in front of my car. They were coming from the left, from the right. They were all over. They were so all over me. I said, this is That's an amazing experience. Nine months later, yes. I was with, um, in California um, on a retreat, and I was walking with two or four persons um, close to the Pacific shore and the Silomar, and then suddenly a great gray squirrel crossed the way, and I was like spontaneously, oh, my teacher. And a Native American medicine woman, a la Shining Star, she was catching the phrase, and she was like, what? <laughs> Squirrel is your teacher? Like, this, like, like, like um, X-raying me with her eyes, like, Squirrel is your teacher? <laughs> a very powerful Native American Indian voice. I was, yes, Squirrel is my teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it means when Squirrel is your teacher? <laughs> 
I said, no, but Squirrel is my teacher. And then she was X-raying me for a third time and um, saying, well, if you, if Squirrel is your teacher and you don't know what it means, I will um, gift you with the Squirrel teaching of my tribe. Mm. I was so overwhelmed because I, I, I never looked for it in any books. I thought it, maybe it comes to me. Right. And, and then uh, two hours later, she comes with two like scriptures, rolls, handwritten, yes. offering me the scroll teaching of her scribe as a, um, as a gift to my soul. And I was so touched because that was to, to her tribe, squirrel lives in the heart of the standing people, the trees. And um, it connects heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. It's a heart medicine. It's beloved by children. It's quick. It it's, it's, has light, light speed. And at the same time, when it gets silent, and when you look into the eye of the squirrel, you can reconnect with great mystery and so on and so forth. A lot more aspects. And I was so touched by that. Yes. And since then, um, wow. among others, Squirrel is one of my great um, buddies and mentors and friend. And it, came, it comes at the most unusual, uh, in the most unusual situations. Wow. It's, I did my very first workshop in Munich, mm -hmm. um, first heart-centered workshop ever, and I was so nervous. Never presented the material never stepped out as a spiritual teacher before. And I enter this uh, yoga center something in the morning, and then a, uh, a student comes and says, Thomas, uh, it's the most unusual thing which happened just five minutes ago. There was a squirrel surrounding the center all the time. Yes. Then it went up that tree, took a great cone, and it put it right on the doormat. <laughs> was like, mm, wow, oh my goodness. Oh, well, this, this is for me. It's, yes. So, um, wow. You get these blessings. And what I love about it is this is something you cannot control, right? Right. Or well, you cannot make up. It just happens. It just happens, and, yes. And, and your heart opens up and you're happy about it. If it happens. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. That's what I, what I love. If, if we connect. Yes. And, and if we don't try to control it. Just stay open that the answers are coming. That is so true. That is so true. And trust and know that you're being guided in every mm -hmm. moment. You're being guided. Mm -hmm. And trust that, yes. Oh, that's such a beautiful, beautiful story. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I, I am, I'm like, I have goosebumps. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is amazing. So share with our, our, our viewers how they can get in touch with you and how they can follow you and um, your, your website. Yeah, the website is thomasyoung.com. Okay. thomasyoung.com. Okay. And everything is there. There's a German and an English part to it. Yes. Um, I would love to see all you guys in Hawaii, show Hawaii to you. Oh, the, I would love to go to Hawaii. But I, believe me, I'm bringing you to the Poconos. Believe me, I'm telling you. You, yeah. you, will, you will be in the Poconos. Cindy. Uh, but I would love to go to Hawaii. I'd love to go to Hawaii. Um, I was like, I love to YouTube. I, I was watching videos of you on YouTube. I couldn't find any videos of you on YouTube in English. No, and, I was, <laughs> and I said, oh my goodness, I hope he speaks English because I wouldn't know how. But then I knew we emailed and you were, we, you called me actually. So I knew you, yes. <laughs> but I, yeah, I said, I was looking for English videos of you. It's like, okay, I have to learn German. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. It doesn't sound that good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been such a wonderful show. You're su uh, such a delight. I'm definitely going to stay in contact. Definitely going to. Um, now, when are you going to be in Hawaii? Uh, March. Next March. Okay. Next month, actually, oh. 12th, 12th of March to 22nd. So if somebody wants to jump up, just okay. go to the website. Okay, and, and what are the dates of the retreat 
in Hawaii again? What are the, the dates? Uh, March 12th to March 22nd. Okay. That's just uh, before, before Easter starts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. This has been so great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. This has been so joyous. And I'm, I'm so glad you said let's videotape because normally it's a, a radio show, but I love videotaping this. Absolutely. Thank you. And we will Thank be you. in touch. We will stay in touch. Okay. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Okay. <laughs> All right. Aloha. Okay. Aloha to everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.